Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary friends, welcome to the Southern Comfort Event Center here in Trafalgar, Indiana. It is Emerge 58. Reap what you sow. Andy Sturm, John Gates, AW Alerts by my side as always. But, gentlemen, we have got ourselves one stacked card. My goodness, we just saw an incredible Facebook Live to open the night here between the cabinet and members only and to start the night off proper we're gonna have a good old match but every championship on the line here tonight Andy all four emerge championships we've got the emerge championship the outbreak championship the women's championship and our first match of the night it's the emerge tag team championship between the skimmo horns and custom made but not only do we have that we've got Paragon taking on Jake Carter taking on a Mikey in a triple threat Sam B making his Emerge debut from Impact Wrestling coming on to take on Braden Lee and then our main event, what we've all been waiting for. What I it, it, Since the card was announced, I could not wait. It's Absolutely. the Pope, Elijah Burke, taking on Justin Kyle. But somehow, some way, Hollywood House is going to be in the corner of the Pope. I mean, he's got the connections. I'm not sure exactly how he managed to get into that one, but... He's fulfilling a lifelong dream in this matchup, as far as I'm understanding, and I cannot wait to see that. I mean, it's it's going it's to be, be a great match. It's going to be a great card. We're getting ourselves underway here for that tag match. And Gentlemen, I cannot wait. It's been a while since we've seen both the Skimmer Horns taking on Custom Made. It's been a while since we've seen the Skimmer Horns in Emerge at all, so this will be an exciting return for them. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it, but I mean, my guys, Custom Made, they're, they're not going to leave Trafalgar without that good, those gold tag team championship belts. It's not going to happen. Not tonight. Well, we're about to see Lurch because I've been thinking, I mean, this is... Morty's Millionaires at their lowest. I've never seen the, the chink in the armor that I have as they are in tonight. So uh, anything could happen. I wouldn't be so confident. Matter of opinion. That's a matter of opinion. Well, let's get ourselves underway with this show for the evening. I'm, I'm excited to see this. Brad and Briar making their return. You know, it's been since Emerge 54 since we've seen the Skimmo Horns. That was Mikey Likes It, our first show here at the Southern Covered Event Center. Didn't turn out great for the behave. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Or, you know, our good friend Mikey coming out with the Skimmo Horns. Well, and that's the thing too. I don't know why they came in here with the attitude that they did. I mean, they're good friends with Mikey. They can't just be, you know, carefree like him. They came in here with a chip on their shoulder and now they're, you know, they, they got this tag team championship match. They got to take themselves, you know, uh, with a little bit more respect for, for you know, this company. And so yeah. we're, we're going to see. I mean, like I said, custom made is uh, Morty's Millionaires in general at their lowest that I've seen. Ever, ever, since, the skin, ever since the Skinner Horns have teamed up with Mikey, I've lost respect for the Skinner Horns. Of course you have. Of course, of, of course. But I do, honestly, I do like to see the fact that Mikey is out here to May, maybe make sure that the Skimmer Horns stay on the straight and narrow, but also try to even out the odds. I mean, we we all know, we've all seen what Mortimer Blankenship the Third can and has done during matches. And hi, Mikey. Listen, guys, they're my friends now, and they promised me that they wouldn't be on the That's what we were just talking about in yeah, way we'll better see. words. But we'll see about that. I think that's just the song. We'll see, Mikey. Mikey, always such a wonderful character. We'll, again, we'll see him later on tonight in that triple threat, but coming out here to support his friends in the Skimma Horns and try to keep them, you know. I'm gonna be real honest with you. I know that this might be super flip floppy of me, but if they're friends of Mikey, they're friends of mine. I mean, come on. I, you can't you can't not trust Mikey, let's be real. Anybody but, but, but these guys. But some people you cannot trust Custom made, being led by Mortimer Blankenship the third. Yes, they are. You know they still do hold those Emerge Tag Team Championships. Yeah, Andy, you talk about we haven't seen the Skimmerhorns here since '54. How about this? Custom made, holding the tag titles for 672 days to the date. 
what a, a, a reign they've had. They've had a stranglehold on those tag team championships since Emergence Day 5. And at this point, it seems like nobody could take it off of them because Morty's Millionaires was just so, so powerful. It was just so its own entity. And I guess we're just going to have to see. Did you see the focus and determination on Roger Malcolm's face right there? I mean, he's not going to let go of that belt. Not against a team like the Skimmer Horns, not with the distraction like Mike. Well, my goodness, to be fair, the focus on Morty's face as well. I mean, he's usually yes. out here hemming and hawing and, and laughing his face off, but not tonight. He knows that he's in for a treat. Morty has, probably has a lot on his mind. Is, uh, he's serious. The referee gets patted down as well. Hey, you know, you, you never know, but uh, the Skimmerhorns and Mikey doing their job of making sure the referee's on the straight and narrow. But, you as know, they should. As, as, yeah, as it should. Uh, but as we were saying, Mortimer Blankus at the third, it's, you know, the rest of Morty's Wheelers have been kind of on his slide. He's got a lot on his mind because they t there is going to be that revenge match later on of Daniel Eads and Jordan Cage as. Morty still trying, was trying to get Jordan Cage back on his side, but last month Jordan Cage making the statement, making it known he does not want to be affiliated or associated with Mortimer anymore. There it is. And listen to this Emerge crowd. They absolutely cannot stand Mortimer, cannot stand Custom Made. And I mean, for, for good reason. The, Mortimer has been involving himself in so many matches and distorting the endings of matches and, and getting himself involved where he absolutely should not be. But now it seems like the Skimmerhorns are being a little wise here. They've got Mikey here with them to try to maybe try to keep an eye and make sure that they can have an even playing field, so That's to speak. That's all we ask for is just an even playing field. Let's see who's the better team. It's obvious who the better team you is. You can't respect guys. Mikey for that, Lurch. I mean, can you not look at the ring and see the, who the better team is? I'm obviously custom made, clearly got the upper hand in this in that discussion we will see who the better team is who can come out with the victory to open up reap what you sow and the the crowd this is one of the most active crowd emerge crowds in, in recent memory they are ready and raring to go for tonight wow what a win my goodness Eric Draven starting the match off, and I believe that is, I believe that is Briar Skimmerhorn. Yes, Briar Skimmerhorn starting the match off for them too. Brother Skimmerhorn making making their way back here to emerge and trying to see what they can do as Draven again goes for that wild punch and Briar just slips right out of the way. Well, and here's the thing too, look how focused they are. You talk about Morty's focus and the Morty's Millionaire's focus, the Skimmerhorn's focus. They've been in position where they can hold the tag championships before and just has never came to fruition and they are not looking to let that escape them here tonight. Oh, Roger Malcolm now getting in on the tag and a nice <laughs> suplex to get the offense rolling here. It's one of their most I guess their best traits there is just the fundamentals of custom made. That's why they've been tag champs for as long as they have. Well, besides, be, yeah, besides, besides Mortimer. Besides the fact that they're excellent tag team specialists. I mean, they are great. They are one of the, the best tag team in Emerge so far with the, the Emerge Championships. But, you know, they do have that tag team finesse. But right now, Roger Malcolm, I get it. Getting finessed into the corner of the Skimmerhorns. This is, you know, this is classic tag team maneuvering. Cut off the ring, keep your opponent away from his tag partner, wear someone down. And they've got Mikey there just oh. to, you know, whether it's little nuances, whether it's trying to give them advice, whether it's just pumping them up. I mean, the Skimmerhorns are on fire here. 
starting off strong, working on the arms. Double axe handle coming in, and now again twisting it up. This is the Skimmer Horns. This is what we've seen. Great tag team maneuvering from them. And I always feel like teams have more success when they take out Roger Falcon. He's the one that you don't know what's going to happen. He's a wild card, and they're taking him out here, and you usually see the teams with the most success doing that early on. I will say that uh, it looked like the Skipper Hearts slightly off page there, but they managed to get themselves back together for that big tag team splash. Again, only a two count onto Roger Malcolm. And you got to imagine Eric Draven is is furious and wanting to get into this match right now. I just can't, just can't do anything about it. Big drop kick as Brad gets himself in for a little bit of offense. Oh, but there we go again. And it just leads to Rich, the big slingshot up the ropes. They don't let themselves prove that they're the best tag team because of things like that. I think Brad, I think Brad Skimhorn might have got distracted. I think he was trying to kick Mortimer. Oh. There, there was no reason for him to try to kick Mortimer. Mortimer hasn't made, hadn't made himself known in the match up until that point where he was grabbing the leg to stop momentum and now speaking of momentum it's all in the corner of custom made they've separated out the teams and and this is that's oh. kind of the skim arms we're used to seeing the aggressive the fast pace letting them get ahead of themselves and it, they got to keep themselves under control mikey's got to try to reel them in if they want to capture gold yeah custom made had nipped that right in the bud the, the explosiveness of the skimmer horns they knew that was going to be a detriment Ooh. to this match here so they're trying to get this done asap uh, speaking of explosiveness an exploder out of the corner from draven only catches that two count good reversal from draven and a big clothesline takes out brad still only a two count and Breyer breathing a sigh of relief on the side. You talk about antsy to get in, look at him. He's ready to go, oh. just fingertips away. Custom from, made ring. Fingertips away from getting that tag. Still only a two count. Brad still fighting, trying to stay in this match. Can he get in? He's got the tag made, the tag's been made, but the referee's distracted. Oh, no, no, come on, that was... I didn't see it. I don't think he did make the tag. Uh, George, how could you not? As far as I'm concerned, look at Eric Draven just, just keeping Brad Skimmerhorn down and wearing him out. That's what I see. It took everything out of, out of him just to get to the corner. I mean, can he possibly do it again? Well, not only that, Custom Made did a switch and did a tag as well. And that's another situation of ring awareness and knowing exactly how to taunt your opponents into making mistakes. That is what Custom Made can do. This is the Custom Made we're used to seeing. Is, and once again, again, switching in and out without an official tag being made. It's just scientific at this point. I mean, everything they do has a purpose. They Once they get off track, they get right back on it. So close to getting the tag, but stopped once again by that wild card. Now just laying in on that camel clutch, putting so much pressure onto the back, onto the neck. Brad, though, Brad is able to fight back. Where is he getting it from? What reserve is he drawing that from? He's digging somewhere massively deep on, in Roger. the cast, taken. Looking for the tag, but Roger Malcolm stops again? the referee. And, and, and it's just, it's Bedlam at this point. There is, there is no organization. This referee needs to get this match under control. Eric Draven with that swift kick. And the worst the part is it's almost not the, the official's fault here. I mean, there's just so much going on. They are so good at creating those distractions, but some semblance of control, please. Well, Custom Made currently do have control, especially after that backdrop. It's still only a two count. Brett is in a bad way. Brett Skimmerhorn needs to make a tag if, if he wants his team to continue to have a chance. Sunset Flip might get this two. Oh, three, no. oh man. 
Eric Grave is still somehow able to kick out after that surprising sunset flip. But Brad oh, makes oh, the no. tag! Brad gets the tag! Brian is in! Ducks under! Ducks under and get him! With Malcolm! Malcolm takes out Draven! No, 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 guys. What is going on? Justin May, Justin May needs to turn this around, get the momentum back where they had it. Oh, a big, nice. big Hurricane Runner takes down Roger Malcolm, sends him into the corner. Just an inch, that's all they needed here. Big spear, Malcolm's down, knees to the face. This is tag team work from the Skim of Horns. Two, oh, it's wow. a kick out. Oh, my Malcolm just, just able to kick out, but also Draven there to try to run interference. Dumping, dumping Brad out of the ring goes Briar left standing with both members of Custom Made. Oh! The low blow! A direct low blow and the referee is not... Finally. I mean, I get it. Like, you want to see this match come to a real conclusion, but what, Morty? Custom Made match has come to a real conclusion. One, count two, two huh? three, what? what? Oh. Should have been it. They had him right there. Bri Bri Briar Skimmerhorn somehow kicking out after that massive level. Morty's got the club. Eric Jones got the club. Oh, who's that? Who's that? What's that? What's, What's he doing here? This match has broken down beyond all belief. Here. It's all alone. Double rip for oh, Briar. Oh, Takes him down. Team. One, two, three. We got new tag champs. We got new tag champs. The Skimmer Horns, they've managed to end the 600 plus day reign of Custom Made. I can't, I, 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 I I'm speechless here. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Lurch, I know you're devastated, oh. but come on, man. I mean, that's a, that's a solid tag team, getting what they deserve here tonight. The Skimmer Horns are our first tag team champion. Morty lost at his own game, Lurch. Oh my. Thank, thank the last minute intervention of Jordan Cage, stopping Mortimer from being able to interfere in the match once again. Malcolm being on the outside left Eric Draven all alone. And that was all the Skimma Horns needed to come away with the championships. What a day, what a way to start off Reap What You Sow. What was Jordan Cage doing out here in the first place? What was Mortimer doing in involving himself in the match in the first he's place? He's got a manager's license. Here's the worst part. Like, I get what you're saying with Jordan Cage coming out here. I don't necessarily agree with that either. Yeah. But come on, at some point, something had to break here tonight. I cannot believe and it. Morty is, I just, I, this is, I've never seen, I've never seen custom made like this. They, they've got something to work out between them if they're going to continue on. Unreal. That tag team championship match was one great way to start off the night. We're going to keep it rolling with another great matchup on the card. On paper, this looked like it could be, a, you know, a toe stealer. This absolutely could be. It's PB Smooth taking on Cole Radrick. I mean, it's a cliche, but a main event anywhere in the world. And it's number two here tonight. I mean, PB Smooth. Cole Radford, two of the hottest independent stars here, not only just in the Midwest, but across the country, two well-traveled individuals. And that is one very, very tall man. Every time I see him, it, six foot nine. It still surprises me a legitimate to, see, six foot nine. Well, to see PB Smooth take on Justin Kyle. Remember, he took on Justin Kyle for that Emerge Championship. And to see Justin Kyle be towered over, it is, that is, you know, just, PB Smooth is a massive man that can move like a cruiserweight. And isn't he smooth? I mean, it's a, smooth as him. <laughs> what you, what, come on, John. 
it, it, it's in the name. I'm glad you mentioned, too, about PB's uh, last trip here to Trafalgar because this match right here, I mean, this is almost the most must-win match for any two men. I mean, PB Smooth coming off of that loss to Justin Kyle, I mean, where do you go from there, right? And, and Cole Radrick, I mean, we're seeing him you know, had, had that loss to Sage Phillips last month. And I mean, it's not that he doesn't have it anymore, but it's almost like he just has to find it again. So this is a must win for either of these men here tonight. Absolutely. And it is going to be an uphill battle for Cole Radrick, the human crash test dummy, so to speak. If anybody can take it to BB Smooth, though, it will be Cole Radrick. I don't think PB Smooth has really taken on anybody who has the skill set and caliber and uh, offensive maneuvering of someone like Cole Red. And besides, I mean, you, you raise a good point too because they have faced off in the ring together. This was years ago though. Cole Radrick is not the same man that he was three years ago. Urban Playboy, baby. And yeah, like you said, this is not the same Cole Radrick. Cole Radrick has grown, has evolved. I mean, we've seen Cole Radrick jump off of a cherry picker, for crying out loud. This is this is a man who who wow. drives <laughs> demolition <laughs> derby. I mean, what's not to love about him? And, and Cole's... I... I have hardly seen a bigger body transformation than the one Cole has went through the last few years here. And this crowd has loved him since the moment that he stepped in here. I think it's funny that they don't necessarily know what to think of PB's move, because how can you not like him? But he's just so arrogant. He's just so full of himself. Like, we know, dude, you're really cool, but... <laughs> Here we go, Cole. And Cole again, not, uh, not. It looks like he's ready, but almost not quite. Kind of playing the size game here. Pretty boy smooth. Definitely going to have that size, that strength advantage. But if there's one thing going on, Cole Ryder probably may have the speed. But that's not going to happen. No. Nope. No. 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 You not you cannot call a double tie on somebody that's a good foot and a half taller than you. He's put on so much muscle mass, too, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't know what strategy Cole here has tonight. And to be honest, he might be rethinking whatever strategy he came in here with. Do you? I, I love Cole Radrick as much as the next commentator. Do you really think Cole comes in with the strategy? <laughs> well, oh. to be as crazy as possible, maybe. Working I think on that entrance? It, I... I I, it, it's controlled that, chaos, though. It I mean, really look is. At his life in Demolition Derby, that's controlled chaos. That's exactly what Cole Radrick's about. Cole Radrick with a nice go behind. And now has a headlock on PB Smooth, who's almost at a full 90 degree angle. But yep, picking him up like a baby. Cole, he puts you down. Yeah, yeah. Cole going back to the headlock. And the oh, effort. Oh, oh, my goodness. Cole Are you kidding me? Man. Cole Radrick just got launched by a shoulder from PB Smooth. I don't even think he tried to do that either. He just stepped into him. I mean, when you're a guy the size of PB Smooth yeah. with the strength, you don't have to put any effort. I mean, what is he, pushing 300 pounds, if not over? And Cole maybe... Two, maybe 200, 215, somewhere in that range. I mean, that is a massive difference. Cole is going to have to dig deep into his bag of tricks. He's going to have to go to that demolition derby side to try to pick up this victory. Well, but that's one thing he's not lacking. We've seen it. It's his heart. I mean, the dude fights still. He literally can't fight anymore, and he's going to bring every bit of that fight here tonight. Cole goes for the chop on the PB Smooth. I think he just made Pretty Boy Smooth angry, and you don't want to do that. Uh-oh. Just tossed bodily into the corner. Radic trying to fight out. Somehow able to do so. Big jumping drop kick almost takes PB Smooth off his feet. He's going to have to use his body as a weapon. 
And here he does for the moment, but again, tossed around the ring. I don't think Smooth has left his feet up until that and moment. Hardly, right? And I still mean. lands on his feet outside the ring. Nicole. Almost ben, surprising himself there. I think he absolutely did, but yeah. this is this is Cole Ryder's comfort zone. He's looking to fly. Oh, 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 what the? oh was that goaltending? That looked like a goaltending right there. PB Smooth barely jumps up off the ground, oh, hands God. up. Cuts Cole off with a big choke on the outside, and now... Oh, my! <laughs> Just throwing red right I mean, to be I fair, you're going to have a bad night when your opponent steps over the top rope, so... As, as the kids say, Cole Ryder just got yeeted. Right? That's... that's, that's yeah, we just saw it again. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the right terminology. I, I, I think so. And, and it looks like PB Smooth has barely broken a sweat tonight, and Cole Radrick is but, really. But that he's got to watch out for that exactly right because Cole's going to fight with everything in him. You cannot take Cole Radrick lightly. It doesn't matter if you have a victory over him. Cole Radrick's head was clearly over the basket when that happened. That is a large scoop slam. What is he he's calling? My goodness. I mean, Smith thought might be just looking for a choke slam just to end it out. Cole somehow able to fight, still standing, does fight. Like you said, he's gonna keep trying and finally. Anything that he can. Utilizing some sort of weakness, goes for the toe, but no! And just planted. And if everything that Cole tries to do, PB has an answer for it, whether it's outpowering, whether it's even it, with PB, I mean, he's quick. The dude's quick for his size. I mean, he has an answer for everything. He has been tossing Radrick around I mean, by his neck most of the time. The wild heart, though, still oh, showing oh. that wild oh. heart. Series of right hands, kicks to the leg. And that might be where he goes. Smooth finally down on one knee. But still, Radrick fighting through goes for the sweep, but immediately gets caught. PB couldn't take another kick, so he should be. Oh! Wow. Yeah, Good night, Cole Radrick. He's out. One, two, three, no! How? I thought he was done. I mean,. It looked like he was dead out there. I thought he was done, but... I mean, Cole flipped bodily over after that slam. Any other... That combination would send any other man to the back with a loss. Somehow, Cole Radrick able to fight out, but he looks out on his feet. I mean, what does he even do here? He's just getting manhandled. And now the bear hug. Those tree trunk like arms of PB Smooth just cutting off every bit of circulation. Well, it doesn't matter how much energy this emerged crowd is giving Cole Radrick. PB Smooth, like you said, is squeezing it out of him. And coupled with all the damage he's taken thus far, I mean, there's no way that Cole stays in this match. I mean, he might not make this three count. Crowd he's chanting out. for him. Radrick's out. And he's out, he's out, he's in, he's in! Somehow Cole Radrick is still in this match, fighting out. It did take a lot of energy for PB Smooth to put that bear hug on. Maybe Cole can use that to his advantage. There's using your body as a weapon. Big headbutt, goes for the sweep again, but finds the target the second time around of that knee. Big kick to the chest. Radrick is on fire, finally finds that sweep. You want to talk about Cole not having a strategy, look at that, cut down the legs. As soon as he's down, attack the head, attack the chest. Two. Robert Smooth still able to kick out. 
It took a lot for Cole to get him rolled over. That might have bought PB Smooth just enough time to catch his to catch his bearings. And I mean, I know Cole has put on so much muscle mass here, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to get PB up for any of those. You know, su he's super ingenuitive in the ring there, super intuitive, super innovative with no. the No! He's trying to... No! The straps are down for Cole Radrick. Oh my he's got Oh, he almost had BB Smooth on his shoulders. But Smooth still standing. Radrick, they're chasing. Dropped face first. Oh, man. And just about took his head off with that clothesline. That could be it. One, two. Radrick still able to kick out somehow. And now BB Smooth looks a little frustrated. Well, my goodness, he's in the match that we're watching. I don't know how he hasn't gotten the victory yet here. I mean, I can't imagine what's going through his head. He's finding, it's trying to find a way to put down the wild heart. He might just be able to do it, but Cole, Cole's got, he's got a sleeper locked in. I think he's got the sleeper hole locked in. No way, he does. But no, PB Smooth fights out. Cole trying to go around tilt the world. Can he get his sense in? Yeah. Once again, going for the neck, going for that sleeper hole, trying to cut off circulation. Smooth, smooth now. Struggling to answer the three count. Come on, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, but smooth. Match. What a bad spot for Cole to be in. And planted. One, two, three. And just absolutely dropped with authority. And Pretty Boy Smooth comes out with a victory, much needed victory, like you said. Yeah, much needed. Be interested to see where he goes from here. But man, you almost don't. You don't want to take any weight. Give anything away from Cole here. I mean, he did everything that he could. And then, but what do you do against a guy like PB Smooth? I mean, what do you do? A good sign of respect, though. Show of respect from PB Smooth. I, he knows that Cole Radwick just gave him the fight of a lifetime. But Pretty Boy Smooth will walk away with that victory. And, you know, Cole's got to find a way to fire back now. He's lost a couple in a row. There's one thing that Wild Heart never stops beating, so it's only when, not if, for Cole Rabbit. It's time for our second of four championship matches of the night. The debuting Joselyn Navarro making her way down. She's going to take on our women's champion, Charlie Cruel. And this is, again, this is a, an emerged debut here for Navarro, but she is making, she's got to fight through Charlie Cruel, who is, has been pretty strong here as women's champion in the last few months. Yeah, and here's the thing. I mean, everybody wants to come to emerge. Everybody wants to have that any championship raised high for them. So this is going to be a great opportunity for Jocelyn to show us just how badly she wants to take that emerge women's championship from Charlie. But like you said, Andy, I mean, it hasn't happened yet. She, I, I just don't know when she will drop that because she works so hard to get to where she is, and it's almost like, how can you possibly lose it at this point? So, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. I like this selection by Commissioner Law, though. Jocelyn Navarro to take that emerge women's champion. Cool. I like this match. Here. Well, here, the women's champion will come out in just a few moments, and she has made 
so much, so many improvements over the last few months. And like you said, you know, finally getting to the top of the mountain, finally getting that championship, you don't want to let it go. And Charlie has done that. You are absolutely top of the mountain. Not. Charlie doing literally everything she can to improve, to grow, finding the toughest opponents to continue to take on, continue to grow. And she wants to stay emerge champion. I think if These she can fans do, yeah. Absolutely too. And I think if she continues to do that work that she's put in, we'll see her hold the title for quite a long time. Never seen her happier, I don't think. I mean, that championship brings so much joy. And, and look, Jocelyn wants nothing more than to take that away from her. I mean, I will say it's very rare that you ever see an, an opponent boo the champion in you know in the introductions before they come into the match so jocelyn's fired up she is ready for this and why wouldn't you be that is a very prestigious title to get your hands on that to become the women's champion in your first match that would be quite a statement to make i mean Haley shadows there she was over a thousand days into her Emerge Women's Champion reign when Charlie LaPop took her. it from her, so. I would honestly like a Pop-Tart. Me. Oh, Lurch, I hope she throws it over here, she beans you in the head. Charlie, though, making friends Distributing the pop tarts that's to the, the fans. Worst, you ever open up a pop tart and it's all crumbly? Yeah, you know, that's true. Smash? That is true. This crowd giving her some love. I mean, do, I, I see it totally. She has worked so many big name talents that it's hard not to like her. She's so good in the ring. She's not having it though. Oh, these fans are, are some showing respect, some just absolutely booing her. John, I, I keep hearing Justin saying that Charlie hit a baby with the pop tarts. I don't. I don't. I didn't see it. I didn't. I didn't either. Lurch, did you see that? Uh, yeah. Oh, did, I'm correct I ask him. Uh, what? Correct it. But there she is, your women's champion, wanting to hold on to that title as much as she can. It's going to be a tough task against Jocelyn Navarre. She's oh, I was like, where'd she go? But she's, what, what is she doing? Jocelyn's on the outside. Charlie is playing keep away with the title. And you, hear, you hear her saying she's taking it home. Jocelyn's definitely going to have the strength advantage in this matchup, but if there's one one major advantage that Charlie Curl has is that nobody knows what she's going to do, not even Charlie. Well, and the thing about Jocelyn's game is, I, I, you know, studying up on her, it seems like she's a sponge, like she's super adaptable, and so we'll see if she plays to Charlie Curl's game here, if she tries to control the match herself. I don't know which one's going to benefit her more, but only way to find out is by watching it, right? I, I, I don't know if you can really control Charlie Cruel. Let's be perfectly honest there. I don't, I don't Masuku even... Masuku is the only... I think yeah. that's the only thing that can control her. Well, we haven't even seen Masuku in quite some time. So that, I mean, we're, we're seeing exactly the repercussions of that as we're getting into that two of four championship match. And... Just, it's that, that high-pitched screaming of Charlie that just, it's always unnerving, no matter who you are. And listen to this emerge crowd. Honestly surprised. I figured there'd be more support for the Caribbean chocolate Jocelyn Navarro herself in this match. 
Uh, she got a high five from a couple of people, I'm guessing. I, I think, I think, I think Charlie Curl is asking for some time to finish that pop tart. Is that what's going on? Or she's asking for some silence. I, oh, she's, oh, she's giving the pop tart oh, to Jocelyn. It's a, it's a show of respect. Yeah. Is that like a handshake now, or it, maybe in Charlie Curl's world? What kind of pop tart is that, though? I think I saw they were like a limited Shopping? edition. Not even toasty. No! Oh! And with the referee's back turn, takes down Charlie Cruel. And you know, Andy, necessarily like not controlling Charlie, but pretending like she was gonna play her game and then capitalizing. I think that's gonna be her her path to victory here tonight. It's oh, obviously we, disgusting, these people sitting here eating non-toasted Pop-Tarts. I, I I this is one of the very few times lurks that I will agree with you. Charlie though off the ropes, big clothesline, catches Jocelyn, gets her one more time. Charlie's getting fired up as it looked like Jocelyn had the early advantage. But Charlie is fired up. Splash in the corner. And a big neck breaker as well. Charlie with the early advantage. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, only a one count though, and this early on, I would be surprised. No fault in trying to do that though. I mean, the, the women's championship is on the line here. Do anything you can to win, and if you get one early on, no harm, no foul, right? You gotta admire the poise of Jocelyn Navarro here, the challenger in this match. Coming to Trafalgar, knowing she's gonna leave with that emerge women's championship. Jocelyn though, looking for like a handshake in the yeah, middle, yeah. in between the ropes. You gotta understand, yeah, that's, that's the thing to do these days. But then immediately pulling Charlie and choking her on that top like rope. Else. I, you know, follows through. Nice trip up by Jocelyn as super well. Quick, super explosive is Jocelyn. Surprising explosiveness and speed oh. coming in. And what a kick! Explosive kick. I would be I would not be surprised to see Charlie's teeth in her bunny backpack at this moment. Ooh. And a vicious leg drop as well. Let's hope those are Pop Tart crumbs on the floor. Josh and going for the pin. A little bit disrespectful though. But it, uh, here's the thing too though, she would have hooked those shoulders down with both arms there, she might have had the victory, so it, it's there, but a little bit of the showboating, a little bit of the cockiness, like, you got a long match to go here. Charlie struggling to get back to any kind of vertical base right now as Navarro in full control. Big choke in the corner. Saying that she liked it. I'm not 100% sure about that. But again, Navarro now just standing bodily on Charlie. On the shoulders, it's pushing it to the her neck. Feet. Yeah. I mean, it's the little things. And Navarro's a natural within the ring, so of course she's going to have those little things now. Dropping Charlie now. One. Charlie, though, in the kick out at one after that. Trying to stay in the match and keep herself going, keep fresh, but it's like a rear chin lock. Gets it locked in, and now the clubbing forearm. Just keeping Charlie worked down. Charlie struggling to get back to her feet, but this crowd trying to get behind her. Yeah, this crowd's trying to get the Charlie chant going, but it's not happening. Jocelyn Navarro's got too much control in this match. Speaking of, Charlie able to fight out, gets a big Enzigiri. She out? Apparently not only a one count from Navarro. That big head kick might have rattled something loose there, but not enough to get even a two count. Charlie's not happy. Oh, Charlie's not happy at all, but look at Navarro. Rolls Charlie up, big DDT spiking Charlie. The ring awareness of Jocelyn Navarro right there. Saw Charlie Crow coming and reversed it instantly. See, I wanted to go back too to Navarro kicking out at one. I love that because you give yourself just an extra second. I mean, I mean, think about how important just an extra second of anything is in professional wrestling. 
well, not only that, it, it can throw your opponent off their rhythm as well if they're, uh, you know, you, you go into every pin expecting hopefully a three count. Right. A lot of times we do see two counts coming in, but if you can kick out at one, you can, you can get yourself into the head of your opponent a little bit. I could, I could go for an extra second without you guys, but, you know, you do make a point, Jeff. I think that's about the closest we'll get to a compliment from Lurch. That I'll, we'll take see, so I, well, I'll, I'll take it. Speaking of Charlie taking that big stomp to the back, Navarro taking full control of the match so far. Yeah, it might take the championship home with her tonight at this rate. Just look at the look at the pain on Charlie's face. Just being wrung over that bottom rope. And she's resourceful too, Jocelyn is. I mean, she's using every bit of this ring, inside and out, to systematically destroy Charlie. Oh, but big splash is going to miss in the corner. Block the punch. Charlie, jawbreaker looked like caught on the knees, but that might have just taken as much out of Charlie. Charlie's got to try to find a way to get back to her feet, try to get in for a pin cover or something. But how desperately did she need that counter there? Referee already up to a five count. Neither woman to a vertical base yet to break or stop the count. Charlie would retain on a draw. All right, we finally do get back up to the count of eight, but Charlie's still trying to fight back. And this is a vicious side of Charlie. We see her tap into this quite a bit when things start going the other way. That's that schoolyard men bully mentality comes through and she starts getting more and more vicious, more and more angry. Two big shots to Navarro in the corner and now Charlie looking for a third one. Oh. It's time to play, says Charlie with the big knees into the corner. Charlie Crew looking to maybe end this match. Says bye bye with a do it. big kick to the back of the head. Two. Oh. But Navarro with the wherewithal that kicked out at about two and a half. And Charlie looks a little bit stunned, but this crowd continuing to get behind her. Uh-oh. Jocelyn Navarro needs to move out of the way. Oh, there we go. Oh, and then brings Charlie up there off the bottom rope. Oh. Off the ropes herself. Oh. Big oh. knees to the back. And now a lot of mobility from Navarro up and over. Into that short super kick out on the apron. Two. Able to kick out. My goodness. I mean, both of these ladies going through war here. Fighting every little inch, every step for that women's championship. That's what it's all about. Super kick though from Charlie. Backstabber as well. Can she find the victory here? Two. I don't know if Charlie caught all of that backstabber. If she had that might have been three. And Navarro, I'm not sure if she expected to be down at this stage in the match here, but... Charlie, though, working those strikes, and she's picked up quite a lot in her striking game, but what a German suplex coming in from Navarro. Just tossing Charlie around the ring. I think she, if she grits that right there, I don't think Charlie Crow would have been able to kick out. I think if I think if Justin Navarro would have won with the bridge and that German suplex, he'd be seeing a new American women's champion. But you see how many pin attempts are happening? How badly they want that championship at the end of the night. It's just who is going to be holding it? Charlie with the boots in the corner. Superkick has got Navarro down. What is Charlie? Oh! Charlie picks her up, plants her with that package DDT, and now. Holds on to the Emerge Women's Championship in a, a nail-biter of a match for Charlie. She holds on to that championship one event longer. Charlie Poole.
gentlemen, it's time for another, for another fantastic match. And it's a triple threat. There's been a lot of bad blood going on between all three of these men recently. And it's about to come full steam. What a way to bring us back. Especially with Paragon making his way out. Paragon, Jake Carter, and Mikey in this triple threat. Paragon and Jake Carter have not been seeing eye to eye for quite some time. Well, to be fair, I mean, ever since Paragon disrespected the Marianis, he hasn't seen eye to eye with very many people. I mean, one person he has, though, is Hollywood House. I feel like there's been, you know, we saw last month with Jordan Cage and how that happened, a poor excuse for a match. I mean, Paragon, is he's calling out everybody at this point, so. As he should. I mean, look at the purple one. Look at Paragon. I mean, he's, he's the essence of excellence in this Emerge Arena tonight. I mean, and, and, in, and in his defense, you know, he was out with an injury. Nobody came to support him from his eyes. Nobody exactly. came to support him. Nobody came to help him. And so the people that he thought had his back, like the Marianis, in Paragon's eyes, everyone's turned on him. Yep. He's already getting it in, into it with the fans. I mean, he should save some of that animosity for the two guys he's going to be in the ring with. We are going to see the bad blood between these two. The wild card will be Mikey. As, I mean, Mikey is always the wild card. Let's be real. But Jay Carter, we've seen a lot out of him. We saw him take two back-to-back -back victories against UConn Mike. Now, you know, UConn Mike uh, beating down Jake for the lack of better terms, because that's absolutely what it was. It was a, just a vicious beatdown. You know, you gotta think, Jake, Jake's got a lot on his mind right now. Yes, he's won a couple in a row, but there's a lot tearing at him. I saw him, you know, as we were in intermission here at Emerge, sitting in a dark hallway, in a dark staircase, and just, like, embroiled in his own thoughts. But as you saw there, he looks fired up and ready to go. Super intense, as always, and quite like we saw with the PB Smooth and Cole Rapids match earlier tonight, I feel like this is another match that is must win for any one of the competitors that are in there. And yeah, Mikey also There's had, that a, bad blood had a few we're struggles about. in the last, the last few. You know, Paragon wants to get himself back on his winning ways, as he has been. Yes, he did pick up that victory last month, but again, that was almost a sham of a match, so to speak. Oh, and already Jake and Paragon. I mean, they might not even wait till Mikey gets out to the ring to start this matchup. But this crowd, absolutely behind the bad man, Mikey. Well, Mikey got to celebrate one victory earlier here tonight. Can he pull out a second celebrate? I need to get a part of one of those Mikey celebrations. I feel absolutely. like they're a blast. Absolutely. I feel like I feel like a Mikey celebration would put a Mortimer Blankenship the third party to shame. I'm gonna be honest. It's been a long time, long time since I've celebrated the president presence of Mikey. A president? You uh, better no, not go with this match. Earlier. I'm gonna be lit up if he does. I was thinking of earlier. We saw the president earlier on tonight. That is more than enough of Jeremy Hadley. Let's let's get him off of our minds because I really do not want to think about it. Let's focus on exactly three men. Paragon intense, focused as always, with that little bit of an extra chip on his shoulder, he's such a dangerous man. Carter again getting in the face of Paragon. I honestly believe that these two will go blow for blow and almost ignore Mikey throughout this match. And this 
this is surprising because Jake Carter is normally a massive crowd favorite. But the cheers and chants for Mikey have been beyond anything that I think I've seen tonight. And I think Jake Carter loves the support of the fans. And, you know, it, to, to, to hear somebody else get cheered over him, it's got to work into his mind. Well, the way I look at it is Jake, as much as he loves the fans, as much as he loves the support from the fans, his beef with Paragon is over that. Paragon made fun of his mom. Well, it was hitting on his mom. I mean, that's yeah. just that's too yeah. far. So well, from what I heard, his mom, Jake's mom, slid into to Paragon's DMs. That's what I heard. I, who did you hear that from? Paragon. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, he so said it in his promo. Okay. Yeah. I, Mikey, you were talking about them almost ignoring Mikey. Mikey is going to make it impossible for that to happen here. But that is, that is, I mean, that is what Mikey does. It is impossible to ignore this man when he's in or around a wrestling ring. Oh, ooh. See, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and Mikey again trying to work his way into this match. It is a triple threat. But the main problem here is between those two men is <laughs> Mikey continuing to try to get involved. Mikey might find himself in a bad spot here if he catches one of those guys. When well, this is definitely getting personal. See, that's what I'm talking about. Just Mikey just trying to intervene oh. there, and these two just not having it. I mean, you know, to think about how you go about this if you're Mikey, maybe you just let them beat each other down. And then you pick up the pieces at the end because I think he hurt you. <laughs> I, I don't know if he hurt me because he's up on the top rope with a big takedown on the Jake Carter. And now Paragon getting that reversal. Mikey up and over again. It's beautiful. I mean, the footwork, the timing, everything on it is perfect. Mikey continuing the work, and now he's looking to fly as the two are battling oh. outside. Mikey! Oh my God! What was that? How is he still alive after that? Ha! He's known to fly. But Mikey just blowing my mind with that flip over the top rope, catching both Carter and Paragon cleanly as Carter is still out. Now Mikey in control, and again, we thought this would might come down to just Paragon and Jay Carter, but Mikey making his name known in this match. And the crowd trying to count along with the punches. Can't keep up, but Paragon somehow. <laughs> there it is. Mikey trying to punch out, and hey. Oh, Frankensteiner for good measure, getting himself back in, and a big wheel kick sends Paragon out of the ring, and once again, keeping Jake Carter out of the match. Clean house here, essentially. That's honestly the best strategy you can have as a member of a triple threat match, is keep one of the members out of the match as long as possible, but Paragon but now. where they're at at the same time. I mean, you want to exactly. focus uh, your energy on one person, but you want to know where that second, that third guy is at all times. Stopping the third, and Carter again. Just cannot get anything going, but Paragon is getting going. There's that third German suplex. Come on, Carter! You almost wonder how much energy Jake Carter blew. Never mind. I was going to say blew on, on, on you know, trying to get at Paragon, but exploding I mean, to if, break up that pin. If Jake Carter's full of anything, it is energy. That man has... He and that me, man can't go. That's the kids would say. And a big stinger splash to the corner, and again, and there we go. Carter getting, rolling, getting, flying. Wow, what a combo from Carter. Putting Paragon in for the DDT, and then the big neck breaker onto Mikey. And good for Jake, too. I mean, move combinations that you can only see in a triple threat match, and he does them flawlessly. 
crowd trying to get Mikey back into this matchup as we got Carter and Paragon again trading blows. Carter up on the top of this one. Some big right hands. And as you mentioned earlier, this was, you know, Mikey likes it, was the debut show for the Marichir Intrafalgar. So this crowd has a particular peace in their heart for Mikey, don't they? And absolutely. That's about the best way to put it, Lurch. I'm, thank you for that. Yeah, it's unfortunate that they do. <laughs> there it is. But I call them out of season. Meanwhile, it called two count there. Paragon not able to take down Carter. And that's, again, that's one way to do it. You keep, you just keep the third member out of the match, but Paragon trying to bring Mikey in. Mikey! Flipping up onto his feet. Oh, and the beating of the minds takes down Paragon. Mikey not focusing on Carter. I don't know if that's exactly the play you want to do. Not smart. Carter, though, with the reversal, whips Mikey into the corner. Carter looking for that clothesline, but misses. Oh, what a kick to the back of the head. Ooh. Carter down. Paragon looking for the splash. Stops himself, though. But Mikey plays ring around the Carter. Ring around the Rosie, so to speak. And now Paragon getting caught in the corner. Two men dazed in the middle of the ring. Mikey! Oh, I don't Not exactly oh, oh. the best position, but a nice... Tilt the world DDT and the mule kick from Mikey. Mikey is on fire. Surprised Mikey worked his way out of that spot. And Carter finds himself in such a bad way here in this match. Mikey up and over, looking for Carter here on the side. Oh, big running kick. Up a paragraph, paragraph right there behind Mikey. Again, keeping his eye on the third member of the match. Mikey failed to do that. Paragon capitalizing. Oh, and the planting. Carter on the apron. No give. Absolutely not. That is nothing but wood and steel there on the outside. We expected to see Paragon in full control of this match, finally. Paragon still only able to get two counts. It took him a while. He decided to go for the pin cover on Mikey first. Mikey having some time to recover. And I see him getting frustrated, but this is not the time to start getting frustrated. I mean, you were in control of this match. You had the uh, opportunity to pin both men. Just stick to the game plan. Oh, Paragon blows through Mikey, who follows up the big knees. Shakes out Paragon, but Mikey doesn't know where Jake is. Jake up. Oh, but Mikey still with the wherewithal to get, to get out of the predicament and get Jacob onto his shoulders. Two, three, cat go! Mikey about takes one away from Carter and Paragon. And now Mikey looking to fly in a hurry, too. Mikey has been floating this whole match. Mikey with that high paced. High flying offense has caught both of the rest of the men on this in this match off guard for Paragon. Oh. Paragon sets oh. Mikey out to the floor. Face first onto the apron. Mikey might just be out as Paragon is stalking Carter in the ring. Biding his time. I mean. This is where the oh, and Paragon's calling Carter, telling Carter to protect oh. your neck! Protect it, Jake Carter. Protect your neck. <laughs> Carter might just be out on his feet, but that's not enough for Paragon. Land one, two, three, and Paragon with authority picks up the victor. Wait, wait, wait. What is Hollywood House doing here? I mean, I knew that just from last month. I it, come on now. I wondered why Paragon was getting such a big head. I mean, calling out Justin Kyle, calling out everybody else. I mean, Hollywood's is this impressed. why? Hollywood's impressed. Hollywood House is impressed with this victory. Coming out to celebrate. I mean, we, we, we saw them work together last month. And Paragon they worked together. They were just on the same page. And 
telling him he, he sees it. it. It looks like the director's got his hand out. I don't... Paragon's... Oh, wow. Know. That... That's a pairing right there. Yes, it is. Ah, uh, oh, and no. with star right there, baby. The purple one, Paragon. I like this connection. I like this. I mean, this, this is, is good. This is scary for every member of the Emerge roster at this point. The strength of Paragon plus the connections of Hollywood House. I, this is... This is a new page for Paragon. Quite a change in the last few months since losing that Emerge Championship. He has ditched Mortimer Blankenship III. He has made the statement that he is fighting his fight, fighting every day to continue on and fight the good fight. And this is a different Jordan Cage than we've seen, I, I think, ever here at Emerge. And Mortimer essentially rearranged his whole DNA. I mean, the man that Jordan Cage is now, a uh, year ago, two years ago, if you told me that, I, I would have laughed in the you. face, yeah. Clearly mistakes were made. What? Clearly mistakes were made. Jordan Cage is a changed man. He should have stuck with Do you think that's like a mistake? Obviously, obviously, John, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll see what kind of mistake when Jordan Cage takes on yeah. that man right there. You're gonna see why. You're gonna see why. You're well, right. Well, how do you flourish? How do you think Custom Made losing the tag championships earlier on oh. tonight? How do you think that's affecting them? I mean, do you think so? Oh, Mortimer what? is angry. Look at the look of Mortimer's face. Uh, they're not waiting. They're just gonna go at it. This match, the bell has not rung. The official has not called for the match to start. But these two men, this is a blood. Brawl. This is a blood feud between these two. Grudge match is as much as you can get one here between these two. I'm glad to finally see them brawling it out here in the ring. I can't even say in the ring because they haven't gotten there yet. But I mean, the, the bell has still not officially run. This match is not official just yet. But Jordan Cage does not care. He is going to punish. No, he, he needs his closure. He's going to get it any way possible. Whether that's brawling in here, outside, doesn't matter. I, they might go out. They're over at one of the merch tables right now. Cage, is, uh, Cage just bounced, eats his head off the table, and now they're going to be like for Morty. Yeah, Morty, <laughs> you better walk that out. Are you, are you going to go protect your boy Mortimer? You know, here's the thing I love That's about I Jordan Cage. His, his new attitude here is that he still has that same intensity. He still has that same aggression. It's just he's doing it for the right things this time. I'm going to protect my boy Mortimer. What are you trying to do to me, Andy Stern? What are you trying to do to me? I'm trying to see if you're actually going to go protect your friend Morty. 
Cage finally. finally being rolled into the ring. This match looks like it is officially underway. Both men taking a bit of a beating before the match starts. What a drop kick! He right. caught Ease cleanly in the jaw. And it's not like Ease is 5'5 five five or anything no. like that. That's a long way to get up there. It's what we used to call the picture perfect drop kick. And you can still say still that. picture perfect. It, it, it really is. Yeah, Larch, it's still picture perfect. Oh, huh? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's starting to fade. It's starting to fade. What we used to call it. I, I like that. I like that. What I used to call it. Well, there's no denying Jordan Cage's ability. Never oh. denying that. And again, making just Morty is shaking in his boots whenever Cage just even looks at him. But Cage can't put too much focus on Morty. I mean, that's going to be the, the downfall to him in this match if he just puts too much attention towards the Hold man on, on the Hold side on. of the ring. Speaking of the man on the side of the ring, the golf club is in the ring again. He was in the ecosystem. He knows how they play ball here, okay? It's not going to work on him. That's my driver. Well, your driver just got disrespected and tossed out of the ring. Oh. But a big knee from Ease is going to even out this fight a little bit. Neither men have even taken their jackets off. This is, this is how brutal of a fight this is right now. Just how bad they want to get at each other. And I mean, when we were going to see that, when we saw this at first, it was, you know, there were stakes there. And this is just go out there and beat the other guy to a pulp so you can get the. What? Victory. What? Uh, Daniel Eads just lifted Jordan Cage from the apron and superplexed him. I. That is. That is some human strength. Yeah. Dropped him on the side of the shoulder too. I mean, Jordan Gage might have torn a, a shoulder. He might have separated his shoulder on that suplex from the top of the right there. Oh, and Eads with the disrespect, just tossing the jacket onto Jordan Cage, and now looking for that double axe handle right onto the back. Continue the work on the back, the shoulders. As Cage is definitely feeling it from that superplex. Morty's still trying to step back, but he looks a little more confident now that Daniel Eads is in the control. Wow. A big shot coming in from Eads. Well, you got to think, I mean, Eads too, like, I get from his standpoint because you know, Jordan was a mentor to him. I mean, they, how much time did they spend on the road here at Emerge? I mean, doing all the great stuff that they did together. I get it, too. Like, I know why this is so heated. I mean, the parties we had in the penthouse, is it? I mean, and, and Morty's Millionaires, they all held the titles together for quite a while. That definitely has to to be playing in the back of the mind of Eads as well. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no more bonding that you can do than a situation like that. And look at him now. Oh. Come on, dog! Couple of big spears to the corner, and Cage is, Cage is hurt right now. Trying to create, get away, huh? yeah. Trying to create some kind of separation, but Eads still taking advantage. But here's the thing, too. I mean, Cage knew he had to have known what he was getting himself into. Who's gonna know somebody better? You know, Daniel Eads better than Jordan Cage. I mean, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. The parties we had, the the. the Trips we all had out looking for celebrating all those gold belts around Morty's millionaires. Eats right. wanted another superplex, but Cage somehow able to fight out. Up off the top, big crossbody! But still, it's only a two count. Cage digging deep in the well for some kind of offense, but it's been all Eats. And here, Cage was expecting. Oh, hold on. Cage expected that yeah. kick. But the reversal and Daniel Eads continuing to isolate the back of Jordan Cage. Continuing that work. And the way that Daniel Eads batters an opponent, I, 
I don't know how much longer Cage is going to be able to stand in this match here. Come on, Cage has got to find a way to end this fight quickly. He is getting a way to survive even yeah. at this point. Exactly. He's getting battered and bruised. And now stretched out again, the neck, the upper back, that knee being driven in. And you can see Cage's face and just the agony he's going through right now. And this crowd, this crowd fully behind Jordan Cage. That'll never get old to me. And I will always be amazed hearing this crowd cheer for Jordan Cage after so long. But that, that, is, that is a man who knows what he needs to fight for. But you got to fight. You can't keep getting kicked and kneed in the head. You just need to see that proud fist delivered. You need to see the proud fist from Daniel Lee's delivered to that perfect little face. Oh! Jordan Cage. Cage, though, he's trying to go to the well one too many times. Caught his shoulder to the ring post and that neck breaker. And it's still smart by Daniel Eads because he was going with his non-dominant shoulder there. So he still has the right hand for that proud fist. So we're going to see how that plays out. Oh, big kip up from Jordan Cage. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? That mouth, the mouthpiece is in, the mouth guard is in, and Cage, Cage is a man on fire right now. Jordan Cage getting rolling, look at that speed! I don't know if I've ever seen that man move faster. He moved, My goodness! I saw Marty try to go to trip him up, and Jordan Cage up. blew right by him. Like a road runner out there. I, that this is a side of Jordan Cage. If he can continue like this, oh. use that speed and aggression, he might become emerge champion once again. Very well could be, but he's gonna have to oh. survive this fight here. Two! Ooh. Oh. Couple of big knees to the head. Still not enough to take down Eads, but but he's getting closer and closer with every pinfall. It's like a half second, a millisecond that he's kicking out later. Marty trying to fan off Jordan Eads, keep him going as Cage is trying to keep himself fired up. Combination rights and lefts, and now just continuing to fight for the weak spots. Oh, what a cutter! Catching Eads off guard, faking out the punch. And Eads somehow, some way, kicking out at two and nine tenths. And see where, and two with, with this new Jordan Cage, I mean, in a situation like that, he would get irritated. He would get so mad at himself, make a mistake, and now he's calm, cool, collected. He's in control. Cage looking to end it. Good reversal from Eads, and Eads oh. catches him springboard. All right. Catches him over the top. Eads now twisting around. Oh, oh planting. I, just, just absolutely driving Cage down. Oh, but the lazy cover provides plenty of space for Jordan Cage to kick out. I know he felt confident, and to be fair, Eads is a man who I've never seen somebody able to control their opponent so well when doing moves, planting them exactly where they need to be. And like you said, that lazy cover ruined what could have been a three count. Eads, Eads looking for that proud fist. He's got it cocked and ready to go. Just waiting for Jordan Cage to stand up. Cage ducks. Oh, look at the roll up. He might have it. One, two. Oh, Ref just out of position, not able to get that three count here. But Eads right back up oh. and just wow. driving him down with authority. But still, somehow, Jordan Cage digging deep, finding a way to kick out. 
Kenta is starting to do what Cage used to do and to where that frustration, that anger is getting to him. He can't let this moment slip away. He has him right there he wants him. This crowd trying to get behind Jordan Cage. You hear them chanting, screaming for Jordan Cage, but the proud face is locked, ready to roll! Cage though, Cage able to duck out now. Now Cage might have the moment to take the full offense here. He's got each hung up on the ropes. Bad spot to this be in. This is a terrible spot to be in. Oh, oh what? A Driving the knees into the throat. I wasn't expecting that, and I don't think Eve was either. My goodness. And now looking for the elbow drop. Going to the top. Daniel Eves needs to move away. Move out of the way of this picture perfect elbow drop. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait. Oh, there's Eric Draven. Custom there's custom made. What is Custom Made doing? The picture perfect elbow drop connects, but Custom Made is out. No business being out here. Let this match ensue. Cage clears him out, but the proud fist connects! That's right. Proud fist delivered from Dave. Eats buys just enough time to connect with the proud fist. He gave it up. But it's not it! What is... He's got... It's a chain! No, come on. We're seeing this from our angle, Jordan. Oh, no! Eats with the proud fist with the chain! Oh, we my. finally get them one-on-one, -on -one and it divulges to this. Two proud fists, one with the chain, secures the victory. Secures the victory for, for Daniel Eads. And despite losing the tag titles early on, Morty's millionaires ride on the victory here. Lurch, event after event, I don't know how you justify Party that. time, baby, party time tonight. Justify it by partying, great. Actually, I don't know because, you know, now that I've been thinking about it, Custom Made did lose those tag champs, championship belts. I might not want to go to that party. Good point. I do want my driver back from Mortimer, though. Cage, are you going to go ask for it right now or what? Probably a good time. Probably a good time, man. Oh, and and to, yeah, with Custom Made there and Daniel Eats, it's a great time. Go, go ahead, go, go get it. It's my driver. Well, I mean, go, go tell him. I, this is a perfect time, like you said. Custom made, I mean, I thought Morty's millionaires were done for sure, but I mean, are they arguing? I, I no, it, I don't know anymore. What, what is Kate? Is he trying to take them all on? I, fight the good fight, but okay. the good fight. You gotta you can't know, win this. You gotta know when to fight and when to stay down. And, Case, case. Oh, oh, super kick from Eads. Malcolm with the sling blade. Come on. I mean, can we get somebody out here? And then Draven with that driving knee. Poor official Aaron Ryder. I mean, he can't. He can't do this by himself either. Eats well, looking one more time for that proud fist. And it connects cleanly. I mean, the, uh, Jordan Cage might just be out. Like, he just might be done. I shouldn't have what, been. What is Morty doing? Shouldn't have been as hopeful as we get a proper one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, come on, this is despicable. Look at the technique. Look at the technique. technique? Wow, Thank you, nice. finally. See. And finally, That's some security. Finally. Here. Finally, we get the ring cleared. We get some the officials out here. Even Big Brody Bodkins. That is, Brody Bodkins is not a man you want to get on the other side of the eight. Big Punk's out there as well to help support Cage. Cage, again, you gotta you gotta know when to fight the fight. Don't you, I, I respect, I respect the will to want to fight, but you, you gotta know. battles, right? I mean, How is he even? How? How is Jordan Cage even standing after that?
How about next slide? I want all three of you. What? Cade's calling out all three members of Morty's Millionaires. Oh! I Commissioner Lowe's out here. Commissioner Lowe looks like he has something to say. No, he doesn't. Oh. He's trying to. The call was made. If Cage can beat all three members of Morty's Millionaires in one night, he gets five minutes with Morty. Are you a gambling man? Do you take those odds, Lurch? I don't, I don't like the situation. I don't like the situation at all. Putting Mortimer Blankenship III in the ring for five minutes alone with, with Jordan Cage? There's not, it's nothing that's worth that. See Jordan Cage's last match, January 8th. January 8th. No. If Jordan Cage is able to beat all of Morty's millionaires, he gets five minutes with Warner, Blake, and Chip. If Jordan Cage is unsuccessful, he is out of the murders forever. It's official. The word of Chris Lowe is official. It's either Jordan Cage gets Marty for five minutes if he can beat all three members, or he's gone. That bad? He wants Marty for five minutes that bad that he's going to put his entire career on the line. I think about the ramifications. I mean, think, think about, think about the future. You're not thinking clearly. Yeah. You're gonna to want to be here on January 8th for Jordan Cage's last match, folks. I don't, I don't know how Cage is gonna do this. I, I mean, he's barely, sur he barely survived Eads. Now, it was technically one on one, but he barely survived Eads with the interference of of Custom Made and Morty. And you can see the look on Morty's face. I think Morty is scared. Morty is worried, and that's the first time I've ever seen Morty be scared.
And there is the Impact Wrestling star, Sam Beal, making his way out to challenge Braden Lee for that Emerge Outbreak Championship. And this is going to be one of the biggest tests of Braden Lee's career by far. Sam Beal, again, Imp uh, Impact Wrestling star. He's faced off against guys like, like Jake something uh, and so many more on the Impact Wrestling roster. And, and not, a, not only that, he comes out to Nickelback. I, you know, why am I not surprised you love Nickelback? Should be. But you, you said it. I mean, he's the Impact Wrestling star. But tonight, the most important title is challenger for the Outbreak Championship. Absolutely. It's Sam Beal. No stranger to titles, no strangers to challenging for championships. But this is going to be a very, very tough competition. Braden Lee is no slouch, no pushover. Braden Lee, probably one of the strongest outbreak champions I think we've had in Emerge in quite some time. Braden Lee, just as traveled as, as Sam Beal, has even made an appearance there in AEW. So Braden Lee coming with just as much behind him as well as this Emerge crowd. Well, here's the thing. He made mention of it when he was searching for that Outbreak Championship. I mean, this just isn't the same Brad Lee when he first debuted here. And that's exactly what got him to that Outbreak Championship there. Super focused, super determined. Got a hell of a challenge up against him, though, here in San Field. I've said it before and I'll say it again, that new Outbreak Championship looks good around the waist of Bravely. Absolutely it does. No questions asked there. And I mean, here's the thing about Bravely too, like I think at this point in his title reign, we're already wondering, what's his legacy gonna be with it? He's already had incredible defenses, and tonight is gonna be no different. I mean, he won, remember, he won that title in the Outbreak 8 champ, uh, tournament where Daniel Eves was taken out early on. Beat, uh, beat Jeremy Hadley in that ladder match for the championship as well. Terminated. I think Sam Beal is the only man I've ever seen with a permed mullet. You know what? It looks damn good, doesn't it? Uh, you know, I, I, I can't necessarily disagree with that. That is a well taken care of mullet. Those are words that I never thought I'd say in my life, and here we are. This crowd is absolutely loving and great and lead. I mean, for good measure, the man is very, very athletic, can go in the ring. Former uh, uh, former amateur wrestling specialist as well, and it's turned into a high flyer as well as that technician. Brandon Lee has got it all. And he's gonna have to put it on display tonight if he wants to defend his title against Sam Beal. And Sam would love to just come in here and ruin Brayden Lee's day. Why wouldn't he? I mean, Brayden made fun of Nickelback. He'd love to come in here and take that title off his hands. I'm glad Sam didn't hear me say anything about Nickelback in the back before the mat before the show started. I'm just gonna say that. And here we are, three out of four. It's third time to try. We're gonna see another defense. We're gonna see a new champion. We have to find out. No real feeling out process between these two. It is go. From the bell. I am interested to see how their styles are going to mesh here. Of course, Braden Lee, an absolute mat technician, high flyer, all of the above. But Sam Beal, in his own right, is a mat technician. And Sam Beal saying he's got to play by the rules in this room, and that's what he's that's what he set out to do. And let's be real. I mean, it says it all when you're a talent on national TV, right? And, and Sam's got it, but he's going to have to. I think he's going to have to have control of this match. I don't think you want to let Brayden Lee. Oh, 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 look at the perm. <laughs> Brayden's going to hand on the perm and brings it right back in. And, and Beal. He's 
got a point, though, doesn't I he? I mean, yeah, technically he's got a point. I, I hate agreeing with him, but he's right. Yeah, it's not like Brayden's hand just got caught in there, either. I mean, it is fairly curly, so it might have, but I, I highly doubt it. After collecting, he's still collecting himself. How much time do you need? I guess up to 10, huh? He does have until that 10 count to collect himself. I guess there's nothing wrong inherently with using that, but... Another lockup and a go behind there from Sam Beal. And there is one man that you will not out wrestle in Emerge, and that is Braden Lee. Braden Lee has counter upon counter, move upon move, showcasing it here right now. And it doesn't matter how much you try either because he's got at least three other counters for one move here. Sam's actually getting the upper hand on it. Incredible. Sam is no slouch when it comes to the mat wrestling himself, so we have to keep that in mind as this match goes further on. But Braden turning Sam, he's got Sam's legs caught under his knees in that butterfly style position, wrenching it onto the neck as well. Again, Braden just finding another way to get out and continue to inflict pressure. Hey guys, you know what concert costs 45 cents? Nickelback featuring 50 Cent. Oh, gosh. I'm glad you took that one. <laughs> the Sam Beal taking that drop kick, though, from Braden Lee. Again, Beal on the outside trying to collect his thoughts. I just looked that up. I mean, I've told my daughter that joke. It, it, it's... Oh. oh. Beal. And Braden's had enough. He's just going to take the fight right to him. Uh, why not? Braden Lee is not the type of champion who will oh. willingly win off of a tank oh. count. Oh. Oh. Look at Sam Beal's face. The gasp for air. That chop resonated throughout this gym. Oh, oh and now sitting him down. Oh, and that was a fun. Nasty. Braden's hand might be bruised after that. That was a fudding sick chop. Oh, no. Just taking all the seats in the front row. Taking all the seats. Oh, let go. Go. Oh, no. go. This is illegal. Oh! This is illegal, clearly. This is not part. This is. And the kids getting a good couple shots in. Oh! <laughs> oh! What? Oh. Braden Lee might have just caved in Sam Beal's chest with that one. That. Was, oh, you can see Braden is holding his hand. It's yeah, like, I bet that hurt, huh? Bet it did. What a chop from Braden Lee. Oh. That was Breaking the sick count. Was sick of... Oh. Ooh. Oh, but the throat thrust. <laughs> Understandably so. This is honestly way more of a brawl than I thought we were going to get in this match. Oh! Braden Lee getting a bit of... Look at his chest! Yeah. His chest is... is Ground about me! As red as, about as red as the ring ropes. Sam Bill's chest has our outbreak champions. Paul Prince all over them. Braden, the, Braden gets a reversal and throws Beal right back into the ring. Oh, baits Beal into that elbow drop. Maybe a couple of years ago, Braden, but not this Braden. Braden might have just found an opening as well. Keep an eye on that on that left elbow. Meanwhile, Sam Beal oh, with the big gut buster. And a spike DDT. Beal, though, off the ropes, not... Not waiting, continuing to apply pressure with that senton. And I love seeing how opportunistic Sam Beal is. I mean, he knows what's on the line here in this match. It's the Outbreak Championship, and, and he's taking any avenue he can to squeeze out a victory. And, and regardless of who's got the momentum, I mean, this crowd has not slowed down. They know, they can tell they're seeing you know, the future of professional wrestling right here at Emerge. And Lurch, to be fair, they haven't slowed down all night. Not at all, not at all. 
just think in our main event, we still have Elijah Burke, the Pope, challenging for that Emerge Championship. Against oh, nice. one of the other biggest crowd favorites of Justin Kyle. This roof might be blown off the place, but it might be blown off by this match, the way these two keep going. They are continuing to just, to just drive pain into each other's field. Tosses Braden across the ring like a sack of potatoes. He's, no, what, no! Are you kidding me? Sam Beal. Nickelback just, and the Floss pick a struggle. Sam Beal just lost in an emerge ring. And once again, tossing Braden across the ring. And, he, and just that easy is what Sam Beal said. Of course. Another moniker of his is the natural. Two natural athletes in the ring right now is what you're looking at. And I mean, are you. You gotta think Sam Bill's gonna walk out with that Outbreak Championship goal. You gotta think that right now. Guys, I can barely hear you, let alone my own thoughts over this submerged crowd right now. That is how lively and just... And honestly, more Beal support than I imagined we were going to get. But uh, he's a superstar, I get it. Totally understand it. Sam Beal in control, follows up with that knee to the gut. Once again, holding on through that Irish whip. And now Beal off the ropes with a big driving knee to the chin. And do you see how he kept through with it? He kept that momentum moving forward. He should have kept it, because he saved himself some time there, keeping that momentum forward, sticking the landing there. He should have used that time he saved in going for the pin. It, it was, it's a matter of inflicting more damage. Instead of just stopping at the chin, following through, using that body momentum, using the full body weight to continue to inflict damage. Those are the kind of things that you see from veterans like Sam Beal. It's not something that you typically see from a lot of guys. Uh, someday you're gonna see this on the national platform. You're gonna see all those photographs. These two are gonna burn it to the ground. I can't. How many more you got? What, are you trying to, are you saving me, John? L Lurch, if I look over there and I see like a Google search or something pulled up, I. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, buddy. Well, I'd come for you. I, I, That's I, what I'd do. I can't, I can't move. I, I learned something new about lunch today. You think you know a man. You think you know a man, and then you find out he likes Nickelback. Meanwhile. Well, it's just too bad. Sam searching for his own victory here. Only able to get a two count, though. These two are fighting like animals, though, and it's, it's, it's been such a YouTube. That's incredible. I, I can't let Lurch have all the fun. I'm sorry. Never again. Never again. Meanwhile, Sam Beal, though, does have control over this match. Has a good good hold on Braden Lee's neck. Braden trying to fight for those ropes. Well, he's trying to burn it to the ground, but it's not going to happen. Not against Sam Beal. Not in the Emerge Arena. Oh. Oh, and Sam cuts off Braden once again. And this is how you keep Braden Lee down. You just cannot let him develop any kind of speed or momentum. Oh, Ooh. great. Great might have found a reversal in midair. Anything that you can get at that point, Braden found it. Now he's going to have to capitalize on it. You know, we, almost, we almost heard Sam Bill sing that lullaby on his way back to the back with that outbreak champion to the sleeping Braden Lee. What songs do they have? Well, they got all the hits, baby. A lot, apparently. And if everybody cared, we'd see a lot. We'd see a lot more of them. Can we cut off his mic? Is there a way that I we wish? Can... Oh, it looks like Braden uh, might have some sort of contusion on the top of his head. Just see the punishment these two have been wow, through. Look at Braden Lee fight back against Sam Beal into the corner. Those are vicious strikes coming in. And again, this crowd 
match has almost has not stopped chanting this entire match. Uh -huh. No, they started this afternoon, and you're right, they had it. Brady oh. Lee! I said you don't want him to get rolling. You don't want him to get moving. Braden Lee has found the offensive momentum he's needed. Oh, wow. Standing shooting, standing shooting star. Oh, beautiful every time. Just didn't get the cover. But you know how much that does for his confidence, for his mental within that ring. And, and being the young cat that he is, you know, that's something that he struggled with. And to see him having that under control, it's, it's a fantastic thing. And more importantly, will allow him to hoist up that outbreak championship here at the end of the night if he keeps it up. Well, I don't know if he's a young cat, but these two are definitely animals in this room. I already used that one. He did use it. Yeah, they used it already. Uh -huh. It's incredible. Aiden, some big kicks to the noggin of Sam Beal. Braden looking, trying to find Braden, but can't. Big club to the back of the neck. Sam Beal, though, Sam Beal's looking to fly. Braden Lee cuts his top. <laughs> yeah, anything up in the air, that is Braden's bread and butter. What Which he doesn't eat because he does not oh, have carbs. That's right. true. Not since uh, one of our latest Nickelback biggest hits, actually. 2003. Big headbutt, though, sends Braden Lee flying. Braden. What a drop kick! Oh my god! Get him up. Get up, Sam. Just. Sam Beal goes from top rope to the gym floor in the span of two seconds after a massive drop kick from Braden Lee. And I mean, Braden's hurt here. Is is he going to be able to? Because I, I don't think that this is how he would take a victory. I mean, somebody like Braden, he's going to want to bring the fight to somebody, get a pinfall. But I don't even know if he could even if he wanted to leave the ring. Now, this crowd is split. I don't know if you hear it. Half of them are chanting, "Let's go, Sam." The other chanting for Braden Lee. Regardless, we, we are clearly on the edge of a revolution here We're for this Outbreak Championship. And Sam feels somehow fighting his way back into the ring before the 10 count. Braden Lee, though, has used that oh. time. Oh, my God. Just an explosion into the corner. Oh, still only a two count. That drop kick, Brady Lee about threw himself out of the ring. Coast to coast. Brady could have went corner. Brady could have went corner to corner with that. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So oh, cool. off the tornado with the team. We've seen that pick up so many victories for Brady. But Sam Beal had that scouted out. Yeah, he scouted him out and he threw him a million miles an hour across that ring. Beal is back to his feet, but Braden is still shocked after that. Took a lot out of him to get to that point. Sam Beal saying he is the next champion. But Braden Lee continuing to fight. These two trading massive shots back and forth. This, is, this has become a brawl. These two not necessarily known for their striking, but at some point, something's got to give. Sometimes you just got to punch the other guy. Absolutely. Or stop his toes. You're not going to see these two shaking hands at the end of them. Braden, though, somehow still up on the apron, catches Beal. Whoa. Braden looking to fly, almost catches Beal, but no, Beal with the big spine buster. Beautiful. Two. That would have made Arn Anderson proud, I guarantee it. Made Arn Anderson proud, I mean the cover was textbook there. Everything that should have spelled out a three count victory for Sam Beal, but Braden still finding a way to kick out. Yeah, and Beal was feeling way too damn good about that one, unfortunately, and it just it did not send him away for the three. Oh, Sam Beal giving him the business! That big headbutt. And now, Mile High Club. Sam Beal sends Bray to lead in the Mile High Club. One, two, three, oh! How 
started Sam Beal has ended so many matches with that combination and somehow some way Braden Lee kicks out no we, we I talked about what is Braden's legacy gonna be with that outbreak championship hell I at this point incredible matches is a good place to start Braden Lee digging in deep in his bag of tricks, deep to stay in this match, but he looks like he is out. He looks like he is done. Sam Beal setting Braden up, got the double underhook for Braden. The game has changed, he said. Even says Braden Lee cannot stand. And that might have worked to Braden Lee's advantage. Two. Oh. Almost snuck out a victory. Super kick. Enough to catch him off guard. Ripcord clotheslines ducked out of the way. Beal looking for the other hook. Oh, wow. What? A reversal. Did, oh, my. What even was that? Wow. How does a human being move in that way? How did Brandon Lee flip onto his feet and get out of that? I, I, Braden, he's got it, he's got it! Tornado DDT! Scramble cover, one, two, three! And Braden Lee retains the Emerge Outbreak Championship! What a well-fought match! And what, just like you said, I mean, what a match here. Braden Lee just tacking up another incredible match under his Outbreak Championship reign here. I mean, you said it. Braden Lee, his, his story is going to be these matches, these types of fought out matches. And the best part is, he says bring it on. He wants the best. He wants Emerge to bring him the best. Yeah. And I can tell you, Sam Beal brought his best tonight. But the real question is, on January 8th, who is going to be the next contestant for that Outbreak Championship? Only time will tell, but for tonight, I think Braden's going to be doing some celebrating of his own if he's not taking an ice bath. Take some photographs, great if you've earned it. not let up this entire night. What a way to end out 2021 here. An Emerge 58, greet what you sow with the Pope, Elijah Burke, taking on Justin Kyle. Now we cannot forget about the third man in this matchup. He'll make, his, he'll make himself known. There he is, somehow. I, I still am in shock that... I kind of feel bad for Pope. I mean, he's getting love from the fans, but he's got he's got that guy. Oh, the Hollywood House has earned this opportunity. He deserves to be in this situation here. What a manager. What a manager here. I mean, Hollywood House, he's got my vote. I'll, t I'll make sure to tell Jeremy Hadley that Hollywood House has your vote, and we'll see how, that, how well that turns out. Oh, I mean... Hollywood trying to do his managerial duties here for the pub. This is one interesting pairing because you have a guy like Elijah Burke who the crowd, the crowd loves being accompanied to the ring by a man that this, that this Emerge crowd absolutely despises. And what a way in three months 
this crowd has I don't I don't think I've ever seen a man become so disliked in such a short amount of time. It's not hard for him to do. God, he's annoying, gotta, isn't he? You, you got to give him credit, though. The man got the Pope Elijah that's, back in the emergency. That's one thing you can't take away from him. Yeah. Dude, he's got the connections very, very obviously. I mean, look who he's got challenging for the Emerge Championship. Yeah, but that's the man you have to go through. <laughs> Is it even uh, okay to call him a man? I mean, he's a beast. He's a creature. I... I, I saw Lurch jump as Justin Kyle screamed there. And, and I don't blame you, Lurch. I don't blame you. I, I still have vivid memories of Justin Kyle headbutting my chair and leaving it dead to oh. for the rest of the night. I still have vivid memories of him flying over our head like a yeah. 47 jet over the ring. Post. I still have visions of him plucking that alien directly out of the oh. sky, planting him onto the ground. Gonna have to have the same success here tonight, though, because look who he's going up against. This might yeah. be one of the biggest names that Justin Kyle has ever faced off against. And you know, and can you tell that he's ready for it? Oh, this you know. man is pumped up and ready to go. Known for his intensity, but I feel like he's oh. just bringing a whole another level here tonight. But to be fair, when you're going up against someone like Elijah Burke with the storied 18-year history that he has had, you have to kick it to the next level. You cannot, but you cannot think that what you will bring will be good enough. But Kyle knows he's that guy. And you know what tells him he's that guy? It's that emerged championship around his waist. That's why he's so confident here tonight. And you know that is the reason that the Pope Elijah Burke is here to get that game. Unfortunately, we know. say that that it seems like Hollywood House has become a bit of a conspiracy theory and <laughs> you think and within the last month uh, and some of that is rightfully so I mean do you do you really do you really believe that Commissioner Chris Lowe and Emerge Management has been trying to shut him out I've been saying that they've been up to, to a lot of that for months, almost years, and no, and it's fallen on deaf ears. Nobody has listened to me, and I'm so I'm actually glad that Hollywood House is bringing that up with his platform. Okay, well, as the director, we'll see this conspiracy come to fruition because look what he got his guy. He got his guy in a merch yeah. championship match. And, and Elijah Burke, you know, they may not know each other that well, but he's obviously smart to take the opportunity for that highly coveted Emerge Championship. Oh, you gotta yeah, well, why wouldn't he? I mean, it, you know, you just heard how sixth longest NWA World's Television Champion. Why not add another one to his collection there? Uh, that's, some, that's some conspiracy to get your, to get a client a, a championship opportunity the first time. Ever. That's some. That's that is some conspiracy. Well, hey, to be fair, when, when Pope wants to come in, I mean... Uh, yeah, you can't say no. You can't say no, and, and Justin Kyle's not going to say no. Oh, Justin Kyle to. wants to prove himself. And we wouldn't see we wouldn't see the Pope Elijah Burke challenging for that championship without the help of Hollywood House. Don't forget that. There is a reason this combination is, we're seeing this, regardless of whether or not he likes him or not. Pope, first time here to merge, basking in the adulation of the crowd. And this is it, your main event of the evening. Pope versus Kyle. And it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a mashup of styles here. Justin Kyle, the big bruiser, loves to fight, loves to brawl. Elijah Burke, more of the mat technician, more, more of the speed, the quickness. 
intelligence of the Pope is one of my favorite things about him. His in his in ring awareness, his in ring IQ, there unmatched. Crowd cheering for the Pope, and I think Justin Kyle's. I think he's un unsure of what to do. He's not he's not used to being to having an opponent who gets more cheers than him. That's not something that that you hear. Finally, a lockup. Justin Kyle is absolutely going to win the straight game in this one. The Pope, Elijah Burke, very slippery. Very quick on his feet. Sweet, I mean, but do you see how close he is? Do you see how calm he is in there? I mean, he knows, like, just like you said, Justin Kyle's going to win the strength game, but it doesn't matter to him. He's, he's just going to stay and go to his game plan. And how many people do you see wave on Justin Kyle to break the fight? How many people? Eric with a nice, deep twist there on Justin Kyle's arm. Kyle, Kyle turning it back around. Just the intensity. Come on, Justin! Okay. Does have that ring acumen. Oh, he didn't even... Barely moved. Yeah. And I hope smile has faded a little bit. He was all smiles coming into this, but I think now he's starting to realize just exactly who the man he's messing with here. I mean, Justin Kyle didn't move, and Elijah Burke flew across the ring trying to shoulder tackle. That is, I, I know, I know. Pope has, has gone up against monsters of men before, and he's got to really deep, dig deep into that play to try to take out Kyle, but I don't know if any of those big guys have moved quite like Justin Kyle can. I'm going to talk about moving. I mean, just look how crisp and how clean Pope switches around like that. He's going to have to, to take out our Emerge champion. Justin Kyle, he's going to have to move like that. He's going to have to wear out the big man. And a little bit of mad ability, too, from Justin Kyle. That's, it's an evolution. Justin Kyle is not one to sit back on his haunches. I know it's been a few months since we've seen him here to work. But that, those few months, <laughs> it's an evolution for Justin Kyle. I meant that he is able to, <laughs> to pick up and... and strengthen some of the maybe weaker facets of his game. I think Kyle knows too that as the longer this match goes, the more in favor it is for Pope. Oh, and Pope ducking out of the way, but Kyle's got that title and Hollywood House is running for the Hollywood Hills. I, he wants He's got the clapboard. Uh, don't do it. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't break that. Oh, don't do it. Oh. It's not about that, right? It's it, it's about that man right there. Oh, whoa, hey, oh. come on, Trump really? Yeah, Alive? He's Pope. better than that, isn't he? Come I mean, on, it's 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 digging deep in the Pope's bag of tricks. Something that we don't normally see from Elijah Burke. Ew, his house rubbing off on him. Ew. <laughs> But it was enough to get Justin Kyle onto his knees and Elijah Burke in total control. And look, Elijah Burke is a traveling professional. He's going to do what it takes to, to take that belt, put it right in his bag, and hop back on the plane back home to Jacksonville. We know that that is what he's here for. You see the blood pooling in, in, the, in the top of Justin Kyle there, the, the head, the shoulders. Just listen to the screams of Justin Kyle. Just, I mean, you, you said it. You said it best in his, as he came out. That is no man. That is a beast. And and the the guttural screams of aggression. Oh, Pope, Pope knows how to hit. Just Kyle knows how to take Justin a hit. Kyle knows how to take a hit for sure. Justin Kyle laid back for Elijah Burke to take another shot. Ooh, Ooh there it is. 
Oh, Pope firing right back. Not letting Justin Kyle get momentum at all. Oh, but Pope out of the way of that splash. And continuing the assault there. Picked out the knee. And the body shot. That's, you know, like I said, the longer this match goes, the more it's going to favor Pope, and that's exactly why. Oh, blocked the punch, though. And now Justin Kyle coming right back with those big forearms. Exploding into the corner with that clothesline. Blocked, though. Pope gets the put up in time. Continuing to pick apart Justin Kyle. Kicks a bound and then dropping the fist. This is, again, this is a little bit of a different Pope that we're seeing here. The swagger coming back in from the Pope. And, you know, Hollywood House may have had an effect on him. He may have gotten into the ear of the Pope. Well, Hollywood House wants that championship gold around Pope's ways, no doubt about it. He wants any of his clients to have gold, and what better place to start with than Elijah Burke. Well, Turner, yeah, like he's WWE. jabbering backstage, it's more press, it's more media, it's yes. more eyes on him and his Hollywood conglomerate that he's oh. doing. And for Emerge, can you imagine, can you imagine Elijah Burke going home with that Emerge championship? I would absolutely love that. He's still got to get there, Jesse Collins just drops him out of the corner with that big exploder. Kyle starting to find his way back, and even Justin Kyle getting a little bit more aggressive than we're used to seeing from him, using the ring ropes to his advantage. Rabid animal that Justin Kyle is. You know, normally at this point in the, in the match, we see Justin Kyle hitting himself in that forehead with the chair, but not, not in a test like this, not against Elijah Burke, where he knows that Emerge Championship is always at risk. Don't remind me of that, man. That, that just to how haunts my nightmares. That, 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 that. And just, it, it was so, so surprising and scary, and it, just to see the guttural scream. Nobody wants to be on the wrong side of Justin Kyle. That much is certain. Nobody. Absolutely not. What Pope right now is Burke trying to fight his way back. Gets his way to a standing base. Continuing using the ring awareness and that veteran's mentality. Every little piece he can. It's the jawbuster, follows it up with that big drop kick. He's looking for the support from the fans, but you're just not gonna get it. Being alongside Hollywood House, Pope. Especially against the man like Justin Kyle. This crowd absolutely adores. Kyle, though, explodes out of the corner. Again, that quick speed, but again, digging deep and choking Pope along the rope. And then a big back suplex for good measure. Can't, can't get the pin, though. The ring awareness of Elijah Burke to get out of the way and buy himself some time. You heard Kyle scream out in frustration because he knew that Pope had him. Knew that Pope had his number rolling out of the ring, not able to get the cover. But that's what you gotta do. You're gonna have to capitalize. You see Pope's in a bad way over there. Hollywood House trying to uh, talk some sense back into his client. Just <laughs> one hand from Justin Kyle about sends Hollywood House into the crowd two, two rows deep. Justin Kyle knows better than to let Hollywood House get his way from this defense. To, to Justin Kyle's credit, he's done a fantastic job of making sure that Hollywood House is not getting in his head. He's been focused primarily on Elijah Burke here. And again, we're seeing a little bit of Matt, Matt awareness, but there, there's the turnabout as Elijah Burke looking for a, a potential sharpshooter drags. And that's, the ropes. that's exactly what happens when you try to play a Matt Technician's game. You get outclassed, outplayed, and Pope outplayed Justin Kyle here. Kyle trying to use that big body to get back to the ropes. That sharpshooter is locked in deep. 
And you, you gotta imagine the knees, the back of Justin Kyle. So much pain right now. He might snap the he might snap Justin Kyle's back right here. Oh and Kyle though, somehow makes it to the ropes, but you gotta think Justin Kyle would rather let his back be snapped than tap out and lose his championship. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I mean, and that is a sign of a true champion. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think he has what it takes to finish it off against against Eliza Burke tonight. I do not think so. This is the last. If the finish. match keeps going this way, Lurch, I might have to agree. Whoa! And that just, I don't know if I've seen that happen. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody get Justin Kyle up like that. Elijah, her, Elijah Burke holding his back from the weight, the stress of picking Justin Kyle up. Let's see if it affects him when he goes up to the top here. Oh, not normally known for his high-flying moves. But can but, do it. But can do it. Drops the dagger of an elbow straight to the heart of Justin Kyle. One, two, three, no! And it is interesting to see, Andy, because like we've said, they love Pope, but they, you know, you said it yourself, they don't want to see Justin Kyle lose that championship. Speak for yourself. I think this is this is a point where the crowd is very conflicted. We've seen, we've heard them throughout the night, and outside of the introductions, they've been not necessarily quiet, but they have been conflicted. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you see, you see a match like this on paper. You see Justin Kyle versus Elijah Burke, and you get super excited because you know that it's going to be a hard-hitting, incredible match. But when it comes down to it, and when you got to choose a side here, I mean, that's that's where that confliction comes from. That's where the confusion comes from. Justin Kyle trying to fight out of that headlock that Pope has, and it is cinched in deep. But Kyle finding the wherewithal to break it up and then laying Elijah Burke out. Clothesline, back elbow. And now Justin Kyle in full control. The strength of this man, big stinger splash, and another oh. close oh. turning the Pope inside out. Two, and again, veterans mentality, grabbing the rope to break the count. Just coming right back for the pin attempt. Which I don't know if he should have done that. I don't know if he should have tried to put in more offense. I don't know what it's going to take for Justin Kyle to walk out of here as the Emerge Championship champion. I, I don't know if Justin Kyle knows either. I mean, Elijah Burke is a very, very tough man to take down. He has made his living being one of the toughest guys around and fighting intensely in these matches. Well, you got to think about it, too. We officially have our next Emerge Championship match scheduled against Larry D. Either one of these men would love that opportunity there. It would be amazing to see Elijah Burke bring that what? belt back. Ah. It emerges day six. I don't even know if Elijah Burke is going to make it to the next NWA taping after those kicks from Justin Kyle. Completely caving in his chest. I don't know if I've seen Justin oh. Kyle go for the kicks either. Burke fighting back. Yeah, Pope, though, did, did. He caught another one, but caught a big right hand up to the chest. Of Justin Kyle and now Elijah Burke on the offense. He's found that momentum swing. Oh. Had to leave his feet, but is able to take down Justin Kyle. And now getting the crowd behind him. There are still pockets cheering for Justin throughout this throughout the Southern Comfort Event Center, however. Just catching him. Another elbow blocked. Pope looking for that back suplex of his own. Getting him up with ease. It's still only a two count. It's, it's going to take a lot to bring down a man like Justin Cotton. And Pope knows that. And that's why he's not getting frustrated, which is, is, you know, honestly, why he could be the champion at the end of this match. 
Elijah Burke showing a lot of that veteran's mentality, understanding it, who he's up against and realizing it's not as easy as it looks. And it's not, it's not going to be easy, especially against a man like Justin Kyle. Cobb going for that splash in the corner again, but missing it. That's another perfect opportunity for Pope. I mean, he might have just knocked Justin Kyle out there. Hit the four up. The knee pads are down, though. Burke looking for that train, looking to end the match here. This is where he does I mean, it. What is Hollywood House? Why is... Hollywood House, what are you doing? How oh, is that? that? No, what? look at the clap. Why, why are you... Does he not... He I mean, this is right a, there. This is a full view of the referee as well. Why would... Telling Hollywood to get down. Looking like he's going to use the clapboard. But I don't Crowd saying, no, don't use it. Don't use it. Why would Burke use should. it, though? He knows that it would get him disqualified. And that's exactly why he's putting it in the way. Oh. Oh. He doesn't need house. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Absolutely turn. Oh, wait, what is that? Oh, come on. I mean, there it is. You heard it yourself. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? What's that what is Paragon doing? Paragon's out Why here. Why is Paragon out here? Well, that's Hollywood House's latest client we saw. But he has no place in this match. No way. Oh, oh. Kyle gets out of the way, catches him with the spear, catches him with the knee. That's what you get. And Paragon oh. goes into Hollywood. Justin Kyle cleaning house. This is not how Kyle wants to win, though, and he knows this. What are you going to do, though, when you have Pope on his back staring at the lights? That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to walk out as the Emerge Champion. Respect for Justin Kyle understanding, understanding the match, understanding exactly what happened. But you saw the look on his face. He did not want to win that way. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, understanding the situation that he's in, getting the victory at all costs, meaning that he can go home with that Emerge Championship. But you're right, I mean, he doesn't want it to happen that way. Why does it have to go down that way? Oh, yeah, and you nailed the head. You nailed it on the head right there. That Emerge Championship is what he wanted to go home for. And he saw this opportunity to get the three count, and he knew better than to let Elijah Burke walk away with that belt. Have a Hollywood house in it, it berating Elijah Burke when it wasn't even it wasn't even Elijah Burke's fault. We got to go. If I recall correctly, you're the one that messed that up for him. He had it. Hollywood House explaining they had a deal. Uh -oh. Respect me. Hollywood House just told Elijah Burke. I mean, this is the most intense I've seen House, but I don't know if you want to do that up against a man like Elijah Burke, even with Paragon in your corner. Oh, and you're going to put hands on oh, what? Oh. Why? Even, even Paragon is like, hey, hey, Hollywood, you, you might have taken it a little bit too far. And Pope continuing to try to be the bigger man. Wow. Look at the authority expressed. Oh! Hollywood House just slapped Elijah Burke. I mean, I get again. How can you? Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh. And taking out Paragon before Paragon can even do anything. Uh -oh. Yeah. Don't do it. Let's go out to Hollywood House. He's a manager. Don't do it to Hollywood House. I mean, he put his hands on the lights Burke first. Oh, but he was just trying to, he was talking business. He slapped Burke twice. Don't do it. Don't do it, Pope. Don't do it. might have lost the match, but he still stands tall and one man stays laid out in the ring. And I did not
not feel bad for Hollywood House at all. That, though, is going to be it for us here for Emerge 58. Reap what you sow, a very fitting title for a very fitting end. We'll see you January 8th here for Emergence Day 6. Larry B versus Justin Kyle for the Emerge Championship. Wow. I cannot wait. What a mess. For AW Learns, for John Gates, Andy Stern saying thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in January.